know your IS code provisions, a short lecture series on tall building code, that is IS 16700-2017. So in this short lecture, I'll explain some clauses about wind effects. So wind is uh, a pressure on the building, whereas earthquake is an induced force uh, occurring due to ground shaking. So wind is a, a non-zero mean oscillation. So usually wind uh, oscillations uh, will not have a, a sudden effects because it will go to displace to certain distance and then flutter there. So the direction change, unless until there is a direction change, that kind of uh, uh, zero mean oscillation or oscillation along, uh, about the mean position will not take place during wind. So let's go into the details. So wind effects, okay? clause number 6.2, wind effects. So what code says is <clears throat> for buildings with height greater than 150 meters. So that means uh, this is around uh, 30 floors building. If we assume each floor height as 33 meters, then it is uh, approximately 30, uh, sorry, uh, 50 story building. Then with complex complexities in plan or in our plan or elevation geometry. So that means if there are irregularities, especially irregularities in uh, elevation geometry or plan geometry. And the third condition is if the building is situated uh, in the location where the topography is complex with group effect or interference effect. So what does it interference effect means? There are many, many buildings uh, in the vicinity and there is a possibility of uh, future uh, buildings in future in that area. And then fourth condition is whose natural period is greater than five seconds. So it might happen that say height of floor may be uh, higher higher than say three uh, meters. And then in that case, or because of the structural system, if natural period is more than five seconds. So these are the four conditions. So what for these four conditions? If these four conditions are there, then wind effects, wind effects shall be determined by site specific wind tunnel studies. So this is uh, not all, any one. So if height is more than 150 meters, if there are complexities in plan and elevation geometry, if it is a, uh, it might be subjected to interference effect because of topography. And also if uh, say building's natural period is greater than five seconds. In all these cases or any one of these case, uh, wind effects shall be determined by site specific wind tunnel studies. So wind tunnel studies is a like a specialized uh, subject area. So uh, IS uh, 16700 is not describing how to do uh, site-specific wind tunnel test, but it is recommending that wind tunnel test uh, should be conduct shall be conducted. Then, now another condition is when wind tunnel studies result in higher story shares and overturning moments, then those calculated based on uh, IS 875 part three. So that is wind code. The results of wind tunnel studies shall be used in the design. So there are two ways. Now, one is uh, based on the wind uh, forces based on 875. So IS 875 part three. And second is based on wind tunnel. So when wind tunnel st studies should, shall be conducted, that was discussed in the previous slide. That is depending on the four conditions one of those four condition, one or more of those four conditions, if they're applicable, then find the uh, like uh, story shares and overturning moments from the wind tunnel test. And uh, if they are higher than compared to 875, use wind tunnel studies. So what is that? How to uh, briefly I'll explain how to get say forces uh, using IS 875. That is first equation is a design wind pressure. So this design wind pressure uh, will get converted into force. That is the story force, story share, and also overturning moment because of that. So that is based on uh, pressure is calculated based on this formula 0.6 multiplied by Vz whole square. So what is Vz here? Vz is a basic wind velocity, and that is uh, based on this empirical expression that is K1, K2, K3 factors. And Vb is 
basic wind speeds wind speed there is a uh, wind zonation uh, diagram uh, available in is 875 part 3 so based on the zone this vb is decided and then k1 is based on uh, risk coefficient and the k2 factor is terrain height and structure size factor and k3 is a topography factor so based on these three factors and basic wind speed we can get the wind pressure based on wind pressure we will get the uh, story share and overturning moment what this clause is saying is 6.2.2.1 says is if wind tunnel test results are more than that of IS875 calculated values, then use the wind tunnel uh, test results. Okay, for finding out the stress resultants or for designing the structure. Now, when wind, the other case is what when wind tunnel studies result in lower story shares and moments, then those calculated based on IS875 part three. So, what code suggests? Code suggests is that value that is the minimum design base share shall be at least 70% that derived based on 875. So if wind tunnel tests are giving lower value, so we cannot go lower than 0.7 times the value which is found using 875. Then other thing is in wind tunnel tests, we get the distribution of uh, story shares. So what code suggests is the relative distribution of story shares shall be as obtained from the wind tunnel uh, studies. So force cannot be reduced less than 0.7 uh, times what is calculated based on 875, but the distribution should be same as uh, we obtained from the wind tunnel test. Then the next one is when wind tunnel studies indicate torsional motion, structural system of the building should be modified suitably to mitigate the torsional effect so as to bring the torsional velocity below 0 0.003 radians per second for 10 year return period. So when we do this wind tunnel test, then we get some, if we get some torsional effect, its effect, may, may, if, uh, effect shall be reduced. So in what, uh, under what conditions or what uh, we should do to reduce this one, either slightly change the orientation or change the structural system, and bring this torsional velocity below 0 0.003 radians per second. So that is the uh, remedy which code is suggesting. Then other thing is in all these studies, the suggested damping, suggested damping, that is critical damping, percentage of critical damping is two. The damping ratio considered shall not be greater than 2% of the critical for concrete buildings. And then clause number 6.2.3 for the serviceability considerations, under standard wind loads with return period of 10 years, the maximum structural peak combined lateral acceleration A max in the building for along and across wind, wind actions at any floor level shall not exceed values given in table number four. This is with or without use of wind dampers in the building. So if we use wind dampers in the building or without using wind dampers in the building, any floor, any floors maximum, that is permissible peak combined acceleration. If it is building is of residential type, 0.18 meter per second square, and then mercantile, 0.25 meter per second square. So this is a peak allowable acceleration of any floor. So peak allowable acceleration of any floor or any floor is uh, uh, considered to be these values. These are the peak limits. So if uh, say, if values exceed, then we need to do structural changes such that values are lying below this, uh, like values mentioned in this table number four. So the intention of this short lecture is to help students and practicing engineers, particularly early practice, budding practicing engineers to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. So thank you.